This morning, a call to arms. Doctors and nurses being brought out of retirement to help on the front line battling the coronavirus pandemic. Cruise ship standoff, the drastic plan to get the military to airlift doctors onto vessels who refuse to leave Australian waters. And trials underway. High hopes for COVID-19 vaccines that are now one step closer to human trials. This is 7 News with Natalie Barr. Good morning. More than 40,000 former doctors and nurses are being urged to rejoin the medical workforce to bolster the front line in Australia's fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Political reporter Olivia Leeming is in Canberra. Olivia Professionals, whose registration has lapsed in the last three years, will be eligible to apply for work. Yeah, so this applies not only to doctors and nurses, but also midwives and pharmacists, all being urged to rejoin the health system to try and deal with this expected surge in coronavirus cases. Up to 40,000 of them have been added to a sub-register and could be called upon if needed. Now, those with a, a chronic health condition or older practitioners who are at a greater risk of contracting coronavirus are being urged to opt out. The federal government also tried trying to upskill more nurses to man the beds in intensive care units. There are more than a quarter of a million registered nurses across the country. Up to 20,000 of them will receive free training paid for by the government uh, so that they can treat patients in ICU, with the government moving to double the number of intensive care unit beds. Uh, this, these courses will be carried out all online to try and uh, minimise contact, of course. It will cost the federal government government about $4 million, trying to boost the number of competent health professionals moving back into the system quickly and safely. Nat? OK, thanks, Olivia. A military-style operation is being planned to airlift doctors onto eight cruise ships lingering off the New South Wales coast. More than 8,000 people are trapped on those vessels, including on the infamous Ruby Princess, with the federal government banning them from docking at our ports. The cruise ship owners are refusing to leave Australian waters despite a directive from New South Wales Police. Officers now plan to ask the army to fly doctors onto each each vessel to test every person on board for COVID-19. It's been revealed Sydney backpackers have again been caught red-handed flouting social distancing rules and putting lives at risk. Police were called to three house parties on Tuesday night across the city's eastern suburbs. Within minutes of these pictures of a party at a King's Cross hostel being broadcast on 7 News, police were knocking on the door. When approached, the group argued they were not in breach of the public health order as they were all residents of that address. The CSIRO has begun first stage testing of two vaccine candidates for COVID-19 on animals. The drugs are being tested on ferrets at the Australian Animal Health Laboratory in Victoria. The animals will be given four weeks for their immunity to develop after being vaccinated. Then they'll be given a dose of the virus. The trials will determine the vaccine's effectiveness and evaluate ways to best deliver it. Ferrets have similar respiratory systems to humans. The testing is expected to take three months. Meantime, Health Minister Greg Hunt has struck a deal to bring a controversial coronavirus drug into Australia. The medicine, hydroxychloroquine, will reportedly be brought into the country by an international supplier. The drug is usually used to treat patients with lupus or other immune deficiency diseases and was available here before COVID-19 sent global suppliers into a lockdown. It's also in a class of medicines used to prevent and treat malaria. US President Donald Trump has said it could be among the biggest game changers in the history of medicine. Queensland's Premier is calling for healthy residents to help out senior and vulnerable neighbours during the pandemic. Anastasia Palaszczuk is asking the community to mobilise into a care army similar to the mud army seen in the 2011 floods. Those involved are asked to help out their senior neighbours by buying their groceries or filling their prescriptions.
It comes as the state prepares to close its borders tomorrow. Stricter border crossing measures will prevent non-Queenslanders from entering without an exemption. Unless you work in the state, are required to travel for work or medical reasons, or are involved in freight transportation, you'll be turned away. A cluster of coronavirus cases originating at Adelaide Airport has grown, with fears hundreds of passengers and staff could have been exposed. 13 COVID-19 cases are now linked to the airport, with six of those confirmed as Qantas baggage handlers. Anyone who has passed through the terminal in the past two weeks is being urged to stay on the lookout for symptoms. They should only get tested if they feel unwell. Passengers are also being told to disinfect their baggage to guard against infection. Households and businesses in financial stress during the coronavirus crisis have been guaranteed their electricity and their gas won't be disconnected. The nation's energy giants will also deliver much-needed savings on bills for those facing hardship. It's part of a new relief package announced by the industry's leading body, Energy Networks Australia. Well, as millions move to take advantage of government lifelines, there's one group that's being left exposed. Once the lifeblood of the casual workforce, overseas students are now out of work and not eligible for federal assistance. Many could be forced home to regions ravaged by the pandemic. Spanish Colombian student and waitress Joanna Maria Gilbeleno has lived in Australia five years. She lost her job a month ago and doesn't know how she'll keep up with tuition bills to retain her student visa. No options. That is no option for us. If I don't pay this three six thousand dollars, basically my visa is done. If she can't stay, she'll have to go back to Spain. And my uncle told me not don't come back here. This is getting worse, worse and worse. Jade is another international student who also doesn't qualify for the JobKeeper subsidy, even though she's held her casual job for two years. I think they should help, of course. They, they should. She can't return to France because her stepfather has tested positive to COVID-19 and, like here, there's no work. If I go home, I don't think I'll be allowed to see them. Those with working holiday visas who've lost their sponsorships have also fallen through the cracks. Their only options now to find another job or return home. Some might lack sympathy for foreign workers, but they are essential to Australia's food supply. We rely on backpackers really bad. Guy Gaeta is an apple and cherry farmer who needs up to 60 pickers to harvest his crops. Oh, they come from Italy, France, Germany. Now they can't get here and those already here can't travel interstate. The irony is after the drought, farmers are expecting bumper crops. You start to worry, are we going to have... Um, people to pick these cherries. Tom Saker, 7 News. Prince Charles has spoken publicly for the first time since recovering from coronavirus. In a video address, the 71-year-old heir to the throne said he was lucky to only suffer relatively mild symptoms after contracting the virus. Um, I now find myself on the other side of the illness, but still in uh, no less a state of social uh, distance and, and, and general isolation. The prince paid tribute to the frontline health workers who he said were showing selfless devotion to duty. The UK's coronavirus death toll has soared after the biggest daily rise since the outbreak began. In the past 24 hours, more than 560 people have died. That brings the total number of deaths in the UK to more than 2,300, with almost 30,000 people being diagnosed with the virus. America's coronavirus epicentre, New York State, now has more than 83,000 confirmed cases. The new figure marks an increase of almost 8,000 new infections in just 24 hours. For the entire United States, the death toll has now surpassed 4,000. With nearly 200,000 confirmed cases, the US makes up about 20% of the world's infections. Free data and online zoo visits are just a few of the offers to save money and keep you entertained while stuck indoors. And as households search for more ways to boost the budget, accountants say you can claim hundreds at tax time if you're now working from home.
bringing the zoo to you. Where's the Komodo? Oh, oh, look. So Naga is our eight. <laughs> this is Taronga TV. So the biggest lizard in the entire world. Free virtual tours of the Mossman and Western Plains zoos launch today. Come and join us for the feed. Of course, a visit to Taronga, you only get the tip of the iceberg. With Taronga TV, we're going to take you behind the scenes. At the Opera House, the show must go online. Classic concerts and never-before-seen video streamed nightly, starting with Missy Higgins tonight. To cope with surging internet usage, most providers are offering free extra data and downloads. The NBN has also opened up more bandwidth. We've never been more dependent on our telcos than we are at the moment, so it's vital we get that extra data from them and they think about how they can help consumers through this crisis. For so many of us, the internet at home is now just as important for your job as it is for entertainment. And since it is or has become a work expense, you will be able to claim at least some of the cost back at tax time, along with anything else you might need for your home office. Any new equipment worth less than $300, depreciation on items worth more than $300, even electricity and other running costs. We're talking, you know, hundreds of dollars, uh, depending on how much people are working from home. Alex Hart, 7 News. Coming up on 7 Early News, a check of finance plus coronavirus violence, why tear gas was fired at shoppers at a market in Kenya. And as we approach the colder months, how is COVID-19 different to the flu? That's next. Vietnam has begun a two-week lockdown across the entire country in a bid to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Public gatherings of more than two people are banned and residents are restricted from leaving home except to buy food and medicine. Essential services are still open, but domestic travel is heavily restricted. Vietnam has more than 200 confirmed cases of coronavirus, but so far no one has died from the disease. Austria has made it compulsory to wear face masks when shopping to help stop the spread of COVID-19. The masks are available free of charge at the entrances to all supermarkets. Shoppers must also wear them when entering pharmacies or other stores. Austria has recorded more than 9,000 cases of coronavirus and 108 deaths. Riot police in Kenya have fired tear gas into a crowded market after the government ordered it to shut down. Traders and shoppers scattered as clouds of tear gas billowed through the marketplace. Authorities have started enforcing a dusk to dawn curfew after the country recorded its first COVID-19 death. Kenya has 50 confirmed cases, but there are concerns over whether that number is accurate due to limited testing. A stable in London is trying to spread some cheer by taking its ponies on visits to people in isolation. Park Lane Stables is accepting requests to take ponies to see families cooped up at home during the lockdown. The visits are contact free, but the locals love seeing them at their front gate. Volunteers say the ponies seem just as happy with the arrangement as they're getting exercise and sampling grass from lots of different gardens. Checking finance now, the Dow Jones is down 726. The Nasdaq has also fallen. In London, the FT100 is lower. Germany's DAX has lost 391 points. Closer to home, Japan's Nikkei finished the day down 851. Hong Kong's Hang Seng also fell. The All Lords and the ASX200 both had gains yesterday. Commodities, gold is trading at 1581 US dollars an ounce. Oil is 20 US dollars a barrel today. The Aussie dollar buying 60 US cents, 65 Japanese yen and a dollar to New Zealand. As we continue to feel the impact of COVID-19, uh, many are unaware of the impact the virus could have on our body. So what are the symptoms Seven's Melissa Doyle explains? In the first few days, you may think you have a flu, but deep inside your body, the COVID-19 virus is already on the attack. Symptoms can take up to 14 days to develop, almost always a fever and dry cough. This is because COVID-19 is a respiratory disease, meaning it will start and end with the lungs. In the early days of infection, the virus invades lung cells, causing inflammation. By this stage, your body's immune system has kicked in and is fighting back. Immune cells attack the virus, and within a week, 
80% of people will usually have recovered. Some are not so lucky. By this stage, people with severe and critical cases may have developed acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, an illness which occurs when fluid fills the lungs. The inflammation caused triggers a massive immune response, but the body can go overboard. Killer cells attack anything in their path, destroying the virus, but also wiping out healthy lung tissue. In critical cases, patients will require advanced life support, but even that may not be enough. ARDS is often fatal and is the cause of most COVID-19 related deaths, but only 6% of cases reach this stage. And as health authorities across the globe work to develop a vaccine, for now, our best defence is to prevent infection in the first place through social distancing. Next on early news today, as negotiations drag on between the NRL and the Players Association, Todd Greenberg agrees to match the players' pay cut and determined to compete. The Supercars Championship prepares to go online amid the COVID-19 crisis. To sport now, a deal is set to be finalised between the NRL and the Players Association over proposed pay cuts. Chief Executive Todd Greenberg had originally offered to take a 25% cut, but has now said he will match the same cut as the players in a show of solidarity. While players wait for a decision to be reached, some have entered the workforce. Pretty nervous, obviously, with the pay cuts at the moment. You, you don't know when, when your next wage is going to be coming and stuff like that. The two Bulldog stars involved in the schoolgirl sex scandal, Corey Harawira Naira and Jaden Ockenbaugh, have been deregistered by the NRL and had their contracts torn up. AFL Chief Executive Gil McLaughlin has categorically ruled out a best of three grand final series. The AFL boss spoke exclusively with Seven's Tom Brown last night. Speaking to Seven News on FaceTime, the AFL boss is quietly confident we'll see footy again this year. There, there is certainly a few months before we'll be back. After that, I'm not sure, but we're, we're confident we'll get some footy away in the back half of the year. In the meantime, he's trying to save footy as we know it. With the players' pay deal done and a loan secured, McLaughlin's turned his focus to the 18 clubs. The AFL moving to give club directors some guarantees. Tom, we're working obviously with the clubs on... Um, uh, securing um, uh, their futures through through a revised funding model. Also guaranteeing the kangaroos will stay in Melbourne. Is there any discussion currently as part of this modelling to send north to Tasmania? No. Tom, we've been, we've been dealing with the, the final sh financial situation at hand. Um, we've talked of the, the current 18 clubs and the current structure and them coming out exactly the same at the end of this year. And while a five-week 10-team expanded finals remains an option, McLaughlin's ruled out a best of three grand final. No, Tom, we haven't contemplated three. One grand final is all we've thought about and we haven't thought about anything beyond that. Tom Brown, 7 News. Australian soccer is feeling the full brunt of the coronavirus crisis as A-League clubs stand down players and rumours persist that a broadcast deal is in jeopardy. New Football Federation boss James Johnson wants to ensure the relationship between clubs and players doesn't get ugly. We don't want the players or, or the clubs uh, dealing with this in an aggressive way publicly. We're going into a new era, we're going into a, a landscape that will probably look different to what it looked like before we stopped football. The FFA stood down 70% of its staff. More than $5 million in prize money will be up for grabs on day one of the championships in Sydney on Saturday. Mark Newnham's stable star Shadow Hero is one of the leading contenders for the million dollar Australian derby. The gelding is out to bounce back after being beaten by the favourite Castle Vecchio last start. Can't wait. He's in the best condition possible we can have him in, so bring it on. Day one of the championships is live and free right here on 7 on Saturday. Two-time defending supercars champion Scott McLaughlin will put his skills to the test in the virtual world. With the season currently on hold due to the COVID-19 pandemic, supercars stars will battle in an E-series. I think um, Anton Di Pasquale, uh, he's very fast, and Shane Van Gisbergen, he's fast too. Definitely been putting some practice in and make sure that I'm okay because I don't want to um, be bad and, uh, on national TV. 
McLaughlin came fourth on debut at the virtual IndyCar race. Great idea. Next on 7 Early News, a closer look at how the weather's shaping up in your part of the country. Taking a look at the weather right around the country today, a front and trough over the far southeast will bring showers and storms. Another trough extending across the interior will bring showers and storms to parts of the Northern Territory, South Australia, Queensland and Western New South Wales. Onshore winds may bring the odd shower to WA. So looking at the capitals, partly cloudy in Brisbane, 29 for you. Rain in Sydney, 24. Rain in Canberra, a possible storm. Showers in Melbourne, 21 degrees. Rain developing in Hobart, mostly sunny in Adelaide today, partly cloudy in Perth and a possible shower or storm in Darwin, 33 degrees. That is Seven's early news for this Thursday.